Welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. I'm Richard Fields. On the program today, we have John Cameron, the author of Rekill, Rewire, Aristocracy, and Philip Larea, the uh, uh, a financial advisor, the publisher of Minute Dot, and a poet with published poetry, no less. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Um, the uh, news this week has been monopolized by a story out of New Zealand where uh, a, uh, uh, a shooter, uh, allegedly uh, a, a right-wing guy, uh, shot up a mosque, killed 49 people, and well, actually shot up two mosques, uh, killed 49 people in one of the mosques and killed one person in the other mosque. Uh, why the difference between 49 in one and one in the other? The difference is uh, the one that's been proven time and time again through all places in history, and that's where, where uh, armed uh, citizenry meets uh, armed aggression, whether it's crime or terrorism. Uh, armed aggression or terrorism is limited. There was a well-known uh, local Muslim who uh, chased the shooters and fired shots at them as they sped off. Um, and this apparently has been uh, removed from um, the news feed. I couldn't find it anywhere except for on one site that uh, when I looked, uh, I couldn't find any hint of it. It was originally, re yeah, it was originally reported in the New Zealand Herald, local newspaper, yeah. New Zealand Herald, uh, local newspaper in Christchurch. And the, the quote was, a well-known Muslim chased, a local chased off the shooters and fired two shots at them as they, were, as they sped off. He was heard telling police officers he was firing in self-defense. They were in a silver Subaru, he told police. That paragraph got deleted from future or further you know, the, uh, successive editions of the newspaper. And uh, I, I suspect it got deleted because the mainstream media or the uh, media, you know, most people in the media decided that's not politically correct. We cannot have uh, this juxtaposition of a, uh, uh, a massacre prevented by somebody who was armed. Uh, it's basically probably the same guy that, uh, that, that was able to be successful shooting up 49 people in the other mosque. Well, we've seen right. that, uh, you know, it's, it's really unreported because it doesn't meet the agenda. Yeah. But uh, so many times in this country there have been incidents where, you know, someone came into a mall with a gun and somebody with a gun either threatened them and ended the attack or actually shot them. And, and so if the number of successful shootings has probably been dwarfed by the number of unsuccessful shootings. It's just that we don't hear about them. When armed, armed uh, citizenry e prevents... Exactly. Uh, and and I think apprehends more more criminals than armed police because and, there are and, more armed citizens than there are armed police. Right. Luckily. Well, and then also and there and there happen to be and they're they're nearby whenever and, the crime takes place. And the, the other thing that's going on and and you know bless their hearts I don't I don't want to put down our police officers because who knows I might run a stop sign and one might be watching but. Um, you know, when you look at it, where's the vested interest? You're, you're a, a hired servant of the people if you're a police officer. And, and, you know, admittedly, risking your life is supposed to be part of your job description. You're wearing tactical armor. You have lots of backup and all the rest of that. But if you're a person sitting in your house and somebody starts to kick the door in, you have a, 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 a much more uh, urgent uh, and visceral sense of need to respond. And so, um, you know, there are other reasons for it, too. And, and again, as you pointed out, armed citizenry outnumbers uh, armed criminals and outnumbers police. And, and, but you never uh, hear on, on mainstream media about these things. But um, there have been many studies done that say that, that uh, there's actually more guns, less crime. You look at counties that have higher uh, incidence of gun ownership, the crime is actually lower, not, not higher. And, you know, time and time again, you know, an armed citizenry basically st uh, created the United States and prevented a totalitarian government from, uh, you know, compared to the one we have now, it's not totalitarian at all. It was kind of, it was kind of benign, but um, from, you know, running roughshod over the American people. So, this, this, the, the idea that, that uh, uh, you know, that, that somehow taking away a means of self-defense is going to make people safer is crazy. You look at just one statistic. Uh, there, there are home invasions in, in the United States. There are home invasions in Great Britain. 
There are very few home invasions in the United States where there are occupants in the house. There are, I think, five to ten times as many occupied home invasions in, in the UK. Why? Because in the UK, when you kick the door in, you might face a cricket bat or a cast iron skillet or perhaps a sharp kitchen knife. Very seldom are you going to face a shotgun or a 45 or all the rest of that. Because Whereas it's in this country, In this country, you will. And when the Australians uh, made guns illegal uh, after one or two highly publicized quote-unquote mass shootings, there was no decrease in, in gun crime. Um, it was exactly the same because it was such a minuscule number to start with. So this is it's ludicrous thinking, and, and this is another proof of it. In, uh, in the news also this week uh, has been the college admissions scandal. Uh, John, what's, what's the, and, and one of the, the perps uh, allegedly is from uh, the Sacramento area. Yeah, and I forgot the name <laughs> of that person. Um, sorry, I, I glanced at We don't want to give him any more publicity than he's already got. <laughs> well, I, you know, one of the people who created the, 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 the whole big scam or, or one of the uh, rich folks who bribed their way in? Well, Which the one? The creator. The creator. Yeah. Well, local, local boy makes good. Local boy finds a market and fills it. It's capitalism at its finest. You know, and, and Except not really. Well, yeah, the, the idea, it's, it's, it's fraud. Uh, the idea that, uh, that people need to go to these Ivy League schools to, to have success in life is, is ludicrous. Uh, I read, I don't know, a non-scientific survey recently in one of the local news feeds that I, I checked. It's, it wasn't completely made up. They, they took a survey of like the top 100 um, CEOs of some major corporations and just pulled where they went to school out of a hat. Very few Harvard grads and Yale grads, people like going to Wichita State and places like that. So, you know, one of these fancy Ivy League degrees might, might get you in the door, but performance is what's going to get you through the next door and the next door and the next door. And, and so the, the, the idea that the, the whole, that, that people can be corrupt enough to think that they can buy their child's way in and face no consequences. People think that they can that they be, they can be corrupt and and falsify records and allow this to happen. Um, you know, uh, school officials, uh, people who put the scheme together. I mean, it's shameful, but it's it's really kind of telling about um, you know certain segments of our society thinking that you can cut corners and and buy your way to success. You know, there's also something else going on here, and that is the idea of uh, the, the, the myth, you uh, 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 made reference to it, that you have to have a college degree in order to be successful. Mm -hmm. There are uh, all, from kinds, certain school all kinds of people successful. who are uh, making really, really good money as car mechanics or uh, tradesmen or craftsmen uh, in very, uh, very, you know, a huge number of, of professions that don't require a college degree. There's that. Secondly, there is the fact that uh, once you get that first job, you really don't, you know, whether it's, whether you got your, de your degree from uh, Sac State or Berkeley, it doesn't really make that much difference. Once you are in the door anywhere, you can do well if you are a hard worker and uh, make, uh, make yourself valuable mm -hmm. to the company that you're working for. And then uh, the other thing that we're looking at is during the Obama years and really earlier, <coughs> the uh, administrations the, the federal government in particular, was very, very keen on bringing the unemployment rate down. And one way they did it was getting more and more people, younger people, in college where they're not counted among the unemployed. And the way they did that is by making it damn near impossible to not be able to get in college because you could borrow money to go to college. Mm -hmm. uh, if you could fog a mirror, you could get a college loan. And, of course, all of that money being thrown at colleges more people attending college because more money, borrowed money, is being made available for people to go to college meant that the colleges were able to say, hmm, we've got a, we've got a you know, a unprecedented demand for our services here. Let's raise our prices. Tuitions have been going up dramatically, much faster than tuition, than, than the cost of living and anything else. Faster than the cost of medical care. Which is, which is yeah. another thing that's right. being subsidized by government. You yeah. subsidize it, people will use more of it. When I went to college, my tuition for a quarter was $145. Uh, 
I could make that and make room and board, work my way through college. My kids can't do that. No way in hell can you spend can you can you work your way through college when the when the tuition at a public school is twelve thousand dollars or thirteen thousand dollars, and when the tuition at a at an Ivy League is forty, fifty, or sixty thousand dollars. That's not it's a, simply not possible. Why is the tuition so high? It's because the colleges have said, hey, the money is available. You know, let's hire some more staff. Let's give the faculty a raise. Let's build some nice, not, uh, shiny not, buildings. Not the let's faculty. Do this, that, and the, other not, thing. the money is 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 in the back rooms. It's in wherever, it's funny money. Wherever, wherever it is. Administration. Everybody, everybody. Vice in the president college. of cafeteria. Yeah, everybody. In the, everybody on campus is making a lot more money, and there's a lot more people on campus, and that's the reason why college costs so much, and we have a college debt problem now which is not, not dischargeable in bankruptcy, which is going to be another uh, huge problem going forward. We have, we have a, 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 a way too many people with degrees in political science and sociology working as baristas. Well, and there's a couple of interesting stats. Egypt, um, at the time that they um, had their revolution, uh, virtually 100% of their population had college degrees. They were meaningless. I mean, college, a college degree has always just been an arbitrary um, screening tool. It, it, uh, there, nobody ever had the illusion that somebody with a college degree actually had skill or knowledge related to a particular job. Uh, it was just simply, and I was on that end of it, to say, hey, you know, just uh, delegate it out. Hey, all the people that you see with college degrees, put them on one side. All the ones that don't, put them in the slush pile. So it was never a, a question of whether college is valuable. It isn't. It's, you know, it's socialization. Well, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go that far. I mean, oh, I would. I would. You said it. It's all about experience. It's all about being but, able I to mean, train But the you job. do learn some skills and some knowledge in college. I've argued, it's enough to get, I've it's argued enough. even, you know, people say, well, what about brain surgery? And I've argued that, hey, you know, if you start at 18 and you're cleaning pans in the operating room and you're working your way up in certain skills, you're taking um, courses along the way, certification. Well, that's the way, that ultimately you end up as skilled a uh, brain surgeon as you were ever going to be. But that's college. Those are those are scientific courses that you're talking about people taking. No, no, no. I'm saying that if somebody entered the hospital business at the age of 18. No, I understand. But yeah. you still have to you still have to get the theoretical knowledge to be a brain surgeon. Well, I'm saying that that's a practical knowledge acquired. Mm -hmm. And I, I, to me, I look at, for instance, people who are brilliant um, at home remodels. These these people who are you know wonderful construction people and they're you know roughneck kind of guys. And boy, they, I mean, they can talk about tools and what that tool will do and don't do that because because if you do that, you're going to weaken the support and where, and, and you go, Mike, I think I want that person operating my brain. There's somebody who knows something. Uh, I, but I think uh, maybe they uh, already have. But the, the other big no, point sorry, that no, hasn't that been brought up is to, that this is a huge business for the federal government. They make about $50 billion a year in interest payments alone. Uh, you want to know why they don't forgive, why student loan debt isn't forgivable. This is one of the major rainmakers for the federal government. And all of the student loans are coming from the federal government. They may go through a bank, but they're coming from the federal government. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're, you, as we say, follow the money, and that, that's where the money's well, going. Well, the, the money, of course, is unlimited, because we now have moder modern monetary uh, theory, MMT. And we've got uh, AOC, Alexandria Cortez, whatever her name is, uh, Cortez. Yeah. And we've got Bernie Sanders, and we've got uh, Elizabeth Warren, all of them saying we need to have a Green New Deal, which is going to cost ninety trillion dollars plus. We're going to have we have to have uh, <laughs> Medicare for all when Medicare for old people is already uh, way over its head in uh, you know uh, with unfunded liability. So we're going to you know expand it to everybody, and that's going to make it better. I don't think so. Anyway, all kinds of free stuff. There is no such thing as a free lunch. Well, not true anymore because we have monetary, modern monetary theory, which says that uh, if you can create money to make assets go up, like the Federal Reserve Bank has been doing for the last 10 years, why not create money and give it to us regular folks? Why not? Uh, uh, well, the problem, <laughs> the, the problem is that with mon, uh, mon, my MMT is that it is literally government deciding who will be the have and the have not. So if we think about three classes in our society, uh, it, you, you talk about the ultra-rich who have benefited the most from the money printing. Uh, you're talking about the education system and the, you look at our, you know, in our little area, uh, Davis. 
you know, what a prosperous town that is. Why not? It's all government money. Uh, and everybody's happy, but you look at the home values and people who are private citizens can't afford to live there anymore. Uh, and you take, uh, uh, so you've got the civil servant class, and uh, you look at a number, and it's really, when you talk about active, retired, and dependent spouses of civil servants, people paid by government, uh, it's really 40% of the population. It's an amazing, at 40% of households, it's an amazing number, uh, meaning that you cut that off and you're, you're not dealing with a problem of a recession. You're dealing with a major social upheaval. So like you've got it. all of these pension like that funds idea. that are unfunded. We've got Medicare that's unfunded and all of those things. Uh, and what's really happening, as surely as it happened with, every, with Medicare, sure, Medicare is great for the people, sort of, until it started to run out of money. And even they have to pay premiums, even though they paid for them all their lives. The next generation, nothing. And, you know, why is health care so expensive? Because you've got subsidized people who are not paying anything. And Thank the rest you very of us much. have I to like sort of do subsidy, it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, uh, and, and I do take it to, I do take some uh, solace out of the fact that when you started to, when Bernie Sanders uh, started to go around the country, uh, he just got walloped in uh, the major states. And... Uh, you know, people heard what he was saying, and you know, the young people were like, "Oh yeah, that sounds good." You know, free. Uh, but he got to California, and Clinton destroyed him. He was, I think, Clinton won sixty-seven percent of the vote, and nothing is more progressive than California. And they knew that, hey, if he does what he wants to do, or Cortez does what she wants to do, the they're going to kill our uh, our uh, you know the, the the golden eggs the 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 hen that lays the golden yeah, cause egg. Yeah, because it's okay for people who are in government to get this kind of largesse, but if you expand it to the rest of the populace, then it's going to collapse. And they won't pay. Yeah. And that's why. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, and the other thing about modern monetary theory is not nothing modern about it at all. It's right. it's chartalism from the nineteen you know nineteen hundred. It's 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 Keynesian, Keynesian uh, policy uh, taking out the uh, the filter of the Federal Reserve. Uh, it's saying instead of the Federal Reserve Bank uh, creating money to fund whatever the politicians decide to spend, Congress will uh, create the money to decide what what the politicians are going to spend. Congress will say, okay, we're going to spend money on this, that, and the other thing, and the sky is the limit. We'll create the money, and uh, well, 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 we'll tax later if there's a, an inflation well, problem. Well, I believe Cortez actually just just flat out said, hey, we'll just have the Federal Reserve create the money and give it to the to the Treasury. Yeah, well, that's uh, uh, yeah, it's Congress creating the money in effect. Uh, you know, that's what we talk about and the fiat currency. It's just, been just tried. For... It's been tried in Argentina ever since the Peronists, which turned Argentina from one of the richest countries in the world into a basket case economy. It's happened in Zimbabwe, it's happened in Venezuela, which has the largest oil reserves of any country on earth, including Saudi Arabia and the United States. It's turned it from a rich country into a basket case. It's ha it happened in Eastern Europe, it happened in the Soviet Union. Every, time, every place where money printing has been substituted for money earning, the result has been catastrophic. Yeah. And we have a whole field of Democratic candidates proposing to do exactly that well, just for this year. Yeah, just for fun, folks, there are thousands of viewers out there in viewer land. Look up the definition of modern monetary theory and try to make sense of it. Uh, look up the, the short definition that you'll find on the Wizard of Google. Uh, look in Wikipedia. Look, look anywhere you can and, and see if you can think your way through it as something that is logical. Because what, what modern monetary theory tries to do is redefine money. Redefine money starting, starting with taxation. And really they're saying that the, 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 where you run into monetary difficulty is not due to, to the amount of currency that's in, um, uh, that's in service to the people. Once taxes are covered, if there's, if there's any disruption in the flow, it means that some entity out there in the, in, in the economy has somehow monopolized part of that money. And if you remove that monopoly group from it and there's a free flow of money, then the amount of money doesn't really matter. Did that make sense? No. But that's, it makes no sense at all. But that's the 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 the, the common language yeah, I mean, the, the common language definition of what modern monetary theory is, and it's uh, it's uh, 
Did you have horses on your on your farm? Yes, absolutely. Okay, it's horse pucky. It's horse pucky. <laughs> that pure and simple. No. It's just no. I mean, yeah. and, and, and it's 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 gobbledygook on purpose. Hmm. I mean, it's 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 fuzzing up the definition of money in order to uh, basically do whatever the politicians want to do in terms of creating money and uh, borrowing money today in order to spend money today, in order to buy votes, in order to uh, stay in office and uh, it, to help with the future. It's a misery index is what it amounts to. I mean, the, the idea is that you've got this powerful segue. entity like the Federal Reserve who daily is, is calibrating the machine. 2% inflation, 1.9, 2.1, 1, dial it back, dial it back, destroy money. The, uh, I think the, it reminds me the of the, the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, behind the curtains, it, the levers. Well, uh, you know, and here's the real-time effect. Uh, in uh, December, we had the largest decline in retail sales uh, month over month since the bottom of the, uh, the financial collapse. Uh, people open their statements and say, no, I can't pay that. And so they stop. Uh, and then the Federal Reserve has to turn up the, not, the dial. And they're, what they're trying to do is just say, hey, look, all we're doing is working on percentages, but they don't have rules for them. What it does is create a misery index. And so, yes, we can run that thing at 2% by destroying money. If it gets to 2.5, we'll destroy money. We'll take the money literally out of your wallet, whether it's your car payment, your mortgage payment, the credit card payment, you name it. Uh, and so what I find across the spectrum is that there's a reason that inflation has never <laughs> poked up its head, and that reason is that all of that money creating does indeed benefit uh, the, the government class itself. It does indeed benefit uh, the asset purchases, uh, the asset prices, but it's not going into people's wallets and every time the Federal Reserve destroys money, you know, staying at that 2%, uh, it's coming out of the private sector and they naturally dial back their consumption and that's why the Fed has never been able to get it up to 2%. But of course the Republicans are going to come in and save the day. They're going to uh, cut back on spending. Oh, wait. They wanted the the the, the uh, government had the longest shutdown in history because Trump wasn't able to get enough money to fund his border wall. Tell us a little bit about about the uh, the border wall funding veto. Uh, th this has gone a couple of steps. I you know it was a Democrat Republican issue. Uh, you know get going into the next campaign, uh, Trump promised it and he was going to buy God deliver it and it delivered him the southern states. Uh, and so it's okay. This is the next promise I got to deliver on. Uh, and uh, the you Democrats actually, won the House. He's actually delivered on some promises. Uh, uh, he actually, has actually, yeah, no, which is what's getting he's the other all. people in Washington so upset. He's he had a all. list, and he's checking it off. He, uh, yeah. he eliminated. Well, anyway, yeah. anyway, this is uh, that's where the issue His started. List was a bit dubious, but well, never yeah. mind. And the Democrats said, "Hey, this he is something we could ride," you know. And so they said, "You're not getting anything." Uh, uh, so, uh, with the fact that the Democrats control the House now uh, meant that, you know, that's where the appropriations come from. Uh, the second part of it, so Trump said, well, okay, I'll just declare it as part of a national emergency. I'll take it out of the military budget. I'll take it out of here, there, and everywhere. I've got a slush fund. And uh, that's a slush fund a in a budget that's already uh, forty percent underfunded. I, I yeah. don't know how, how that works. But. Uh, you know, and that all the presidents have had it. I mean, how do we think we fund CIA operations, for instance? You know, how, where where is that slush fund? Uh, but at the end of the day, what he says, look, I don't need to go to the Congress and ask for money. I'm I have money. I have all my slush funds. I have I have um, confiscation of drug cartels. You know, money and property from drug cartels. I've got, you know, FBI. I've got all these, uh, you know, CIA. And that's what he said. He said, I'm going to pull it from here, 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 and here, and I'm getting to $8 billion, which was much higher than his original $5 billion. And uh, so that's what I'm going to do. A billion there. And that kind of got, um, got the attention of uh, some of the Republicans as well uh, in the Senate. And so at the end of the day, he had no support in either uh, either the House or the Senate for well, this national Well, he had, vote. I think it was, what, 59, uh, to, uh, 59 to 41 in the Senate is, is the uh, number of people who voted to stop the executive uh, branch exactly. uh, ledger domain. Yeah. That's not 60. So he vetoed it, and, he, and it's a veto-proof majority, or uh, his veto will not be overwritten. Mm -hmm. So he'll go ahead and do it. He'll end up in the courts, of course. But he'll he'll go and go ahead and try to build his silly wall anyway. Well, I think in the longer term it becomes a good thing, at least for all of us, because um, 
uh, the fact that there, there is that infighting means that it becomes a limitation of power, we hope. Well, the, the, uh, the question, I, the, the bigger question is this, is separations of power, uh, separations right. of power, separation of power question. Will the Supreme Court have the, uh, the, the uh, intestinal fortitude to say to uh, the Trump administration, appropriating money for spending is the job of the House? not the job of the executive. The mm -hmm. job of the executive is to take what has been appropriated and spend it on what it has been appropriated for. Right. The and House it opens was very the clear. Worms about the slush funds. The Congress was very clear in saying yeah. nothing is being appropriated for your silly wall. Mm -hmm. Nothing. And what, and, 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 and Trump is it, saying, and, and, well, and, never mind. I'm, I'm just going to ignore that. Right. I'm going to blatantly violate the Constitution and say I'm going to take Money for the Oroville Dam or whatever, right. and uh, spend that, or, or the you know who knows what. So spend that on wait, wait a second. There, 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 there's something called separation of powers. Yes. There's something in our in our constitution. Yeah, yeah, that's, 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 yeah. So well, we, we if, talk about the if, idea if, that if, you know nobody they have a, a president. Uh, the Congress hasn't approved a war since World War Two. Well, uh, that, uh, and that was, another uh, example. You know, that is yeah, this is a place where Trump is actually actually you know? right. Trump has said, "I want to end the." I want to. I want to end the war in Syria and in uh, Afghanistan. Yeah, and Congress is saying, "Well, no, you you can't do that." <laughs> well, no. I just when you brought up separation of powers, it's it's I I, I you know my day job. I work for a for a law firm um, that uh, fights court cases about yeah. separation of powers, and and there's. Uh, I just throw out a number at uh, the, there's a thing called the appointments clause where, where only uh, an, an officer at a certain level can actually do rulemaking. This isn't law, this is actually rulemaking at, at, uh, at independent regulatory agencies, but which by the way, ladies and gentlemen, are patently unconstitutional because they have the power of the legislative, the judicial, and the executive rolled into one. And how can Congress grant an agency powers it doesn't have? But um, at the, in the FDA, 96% of the rules written violate the Appointments Clause. So the separation of powers issue that's going to go to the Supreme Court here, and that's what's going to happen, and you're absolutely right, is, uh, is blatantly being violated everywhere in this country. That's the show for this week. See you again next week, same time, same place, on the Libertarian Counterpoint. Thank you very much for being part of the show on www.accesssacramento.org on your uh, internet, on uh, TV, Channel 17, Sacramento cables, all over the place, and of course, YouTube. Thank you. Well, thank you, Richard. It was a quite enjoyable show, what I heard of it anyway. <laughs>